Hey guys, welcome to another video for anatomy and physiology. And in this video, I'm going to be highlighting the general features of the spine, the vertebral column. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to be going over the general features of the spine. One of the first things that I want to highlight in this video is the ligaments of the spine, actually. The ligaments of the spine help to support the spine. Uh, there's three main ligaments. The first one, as you can see here, is the anterior longitudinal ligament. And then just posterior to it, let me highlight it. It's kind of hard to see because it's hidden back there. Is a posterior longitudinal ligament. And these two ligaments help to support the posterior and anterior aspect of the spine to prevent hyper flexation. And then just above that, this one right here, this one that looks like a fin on the posterior side, this one's called the nucle nucleal ligament. This ligament helps to support the spine. It helps to, uh, to keep the cervical spine intact. It connects, as you can see here, with the occipital plate. Okay. And also, if you notice the curvature of the spine here, or of the, uh, cervi the cervical spine, um, you notice that it kind of bends in. And so because of this bend, it makes it difficult for muscles to attach to it. So this nuchal ligament here plays an important role in attachment for attachment points for muscles on the posterior aspect, like the trapezius muscles. All right, so let's talk about uh, some, of the, some of the basic features and uh, features of the spine. So some of the basic jobs that the spine has, uh, there's six that I'm going to list. Number one is that it provides support for the skull. So as you can see, it's right at the base of the skull. Number two, it provides attachment points for the trunk. Or sorry, it provides physical support for the trunk for movement of the body in general. It protects the spinal cord. And it also acts as a shock absorber while you run around and while you walk in your day-to-day -day activities. It's also attachment points for the limbs, the thoracic cage, as you can see here. Okay. Once we talk about the individual vertebrae, we'll go into where these uh, ribs or thoracic cage attaches um, on the vertebrae. Okay. They also serve as attachment points for the posterior muscles, all the tiny muscles and long muscles and even larger muscles in the back. Uh, they, they all have, for the most part, have attachment points to the spine. Okay. So the spine consists of 33 vertebrae. As you can see here, and just to the just to the just below that, just inferior to that, you have the sacrum, which are five fused vertebrae, and then the coccyx, and then of course uh, the spinal cord is housed inside of each vertebrae there. So we break the vertebrae up into uh, five different major groups. Let's highlight each one of those groups. And actually, before I talk about the five major groups, I want to mention real quick that in general, on average, per person, uh, the, the vertebral column is about 71 centimeters long. And a good portion of that length is actually the, let me highlight these, port, these parts right here. These are called your intervertebral disc. Okay, this is fibrocartilage. This is the main shock absorber of the spine. And it consists of 25% of the overall length of the spine. And actually something else that you maybe didn't realize is that uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, you actually lose about 1% of your total height. So when you go to bed, you're actually about 1% shorter than you were when you woke up. And reason being is because as you go about your day, uh, this, this cartilage here has a lot of water in it. And recall that it's a shock absorber. So as the day goes on, a lot of the water gets compressed out, which means that the length the length or the width of this of this cartilage actually lessens and it compresses and you actually end up being shorter. Now this is even more dramatic on a person who, you know, for example, goes on a marathon run or something because, it, you know, you, you can imagine you spend about two and a half hours, three hours or more running and that's a lot of compression. That's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of pressure on your spine. So you end up, you know, you, you can lose a couple of inches um, during a marathon because of that. But when you go to bed, you decompress and the water gets reabsorbed into that soft tissue or, or the, uh, the dense connective tissue, the fibrocartilage, and you actually regain your height again. 
So there's good use. All right, so now let's talk about the, the five main divisions of the, of the vertebral column. So the first main division are the cervical spine, the cervical vertebrae. Okay, these are, there's seven of these. The first one lies just at the base of the skull. That one's called the atlas. Okay, and that one uh, supports the weight of the skull and allows for movement when you kind of turn your head and uh, when you turn around or try to look back. And then you have just below that is the, the axis. And then below that is C3 through C7. These are your cervical vertebrae. All right. Now let's just let's look at the vertebrae just below those. And then just below those, you have the thoracic spine. And that's going to be T1 through T12. And as you can see here, I have kind of faded out is the thoracic cage because uh, that's where your ribs uh, attach to those vertebrae, T1 through T12. And just below the T1 through T12 is your L1 through L5, the lumbar. These are five vertebrae. Now, on occasion, as you can see, just below the lumbar is the sacrum. Let me lift it up a little bit. The sacrum, and these are five vertebrae that fuse. But on occasion, you know, one in 20 people will have this where the first sacrum lumbar uh, vertebrae will not fuse to the rest, and you'll end up with six lumbar vertebrae instead of five. So that, that can happen too. And then the coccyx, sometimes the coccyx don't also completely fuse together and you'll end up with uh, four or five. And you know, and it varies from person to person. It's not a high percentage of people that have that that, that occurs in, but um, I don't know that that affects the mobility of the person or not, or, um, or the height even, but um, that does happen from time to time. You know, one in 20 people, as I mentioned. So one other thing to keep in mind, I was mentioning numbers I said, you know, the cervical spine has seven, thoracic 12, lumbar five. So for the main portion of the spine, uh, one, one thing or one way to remember how many vertebrae are in each section, just think of the typical workday. You know, you go to work from, uh, you go to work at seven, right? So there's seven cervical. You go to lunch at 12, there's 12 thoracic. And then you go home at five, there's five lumbar. So seven, 12, five. So that's one, one easy way to, to, to remember that. Um, your cervical spine and your thoracic spine, they don't typically, you know, I, I mentioned before that your lumbar, you might have six, or your uh, coccyx, you might have four or five. Your cervical and your thoracic are pretty consistent in how many they have. That doesn't really change much. Um, and all mammals have seven cervical spine, even giraffes, as long as they have, they just have giant cervical spines. So, um, the last thing that I want to mention is the, you, you, you might notice that there's a curvature to the spine. Let me bring this up a little bit. There's a curvature. So when you're born, as a newborn, you have a, your spine has one curve and it's, it's a C curve. And you can see that prominent C curve in your thoracic and in your pelvic. Okay, let me bring up the pelvic. So this C curve that you see here in the pelvic and thoracic, that's your primary curve because you have that curve from, from as a newborn. But as you develop, as you grow up, as you know, as a baby, you turn around on your belly and you start crawling and you start looking up at mom and dad, the, the cervical curvature will begin to develop and so will the lumbar curvature. These are your secondary curvatures because they develop later on in life. Okay, so those are the four main curves. These are the fa um, five main parts to the cervical spine and some of the uh, basic properties they have for support, points of attachment, uh, some of the ligaments that I wanted to highlight and the properties that they have. And I believe that was all I wanted to cover uh, in this particular video. So thanks for watching and listening and good luck in your studying.